So let me show you what's next. Okay. Didn't know Yarbrough like country singers. Yeah, that is a thing. Well, some of them. Anyway, because I was busy trying to find something that connected us to the next chapter, which, as we can see right here, we are looking at modeling distributions for data. Now, let's look and see what our objectives are here. For today, all we're going to be doing is finding and interpreting the p-tile, and that's the percentile, of an individual value with, a di with the distribution of data. So let's scroll down and look and see. As we look at 2.1, we're describing locations of distributions, which takes us to the idea of a percentile, and that's what a percentile does. It's what the book says here is a percentage of an observation. Okay, I'll give them that. But I think of it as more than that. Here, when I think of it as a division of a distribution, and yes, it's based on 100, well, which is a duh, because isn't that what percentiles do? But I see it as dividing. I see as you're the, as you're the knife, and we are cutting to see how many people did, um, didn't do as well as you and how many people did better than you. Okay. And as I look at that, let's see the pictorial representation. First of all, now we are going to be looking at the bell curve. Yeah, though that one's not supposed to be skewed, but yeah, I screwed up. So as I look at this, I've got here, and I'm going to put where my mean is for all of them. So that little dash mark means mean. So my 40th percentile is going to be a little bit below there, which means you did better than 40% and then... 60% did better than you. The 90th percentile, which is about there somewhere, you did better than 90% and 10% did better than you. And the 50 percentile, which is your 50-50. And as we look here, yay, you have reached mediocrity. Mediocrity is not a good thing for us, is it? No, 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 because we expect to be above the average. Okay, I've got to get the phone. Just a minute. Okay, I think I turn, I'm going to turn my ringer down so that doesn't happen again. So I could just ignore the phone call. Okay, now, as we look at the idea of a percentile, so let's look at this data right here. We have, um, we have a stem plot to show the percentage of residents age 65 and older in the different states. Let's look at our key. As we look at our key right here, we see that 15 um, slash 2 means 15.2%. So when we see that right there, that represents 15.2%. So as we read part A, it says, find and interpret the percentage for Colorado where 10.1% of the residents are age 65 and older. So here on our STEM plot, I found 10.1%. Um, and now I'm just going to count. I've got one, two, three, four um, states that are before that 10.1%. Um, so that's what I'm saying right here. Four states less than 10.1%. So four out of the 50, that means that our percentile, which is again a knife that separates the ones that did worse versus the ones that did better, four out of 50, that is 8%. And recognize how we can write it in statistics. We can have P, capital P sub A. They also asked us to do interpretation. Well, 8% of the states have a smaller percentage of re residents age 65, and I should say um, as compared to Colorado. So I should add that, so you go ahead and put that. Now, the next thing I want to look at is this problem. And you can see I, I put it in blue. And now we're talking about Rhode Island, so I want you to take a moment and try it yourself. First of all, go ahead and count. And here you're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and you're going to keep counting until you get to that number right before it. And tell me how many that is. And yes, that, there are 40 of them that are less than that spot right there, which represents 13.9%. Okay, so... Here, 
40 less than that 13.9 percent so that's 40 divided by 50 so that is going to be 80 that's the 80th percentile and here we can see that's p80 so as I look at this basically putting it in context or interpreting that's a better way of putting it so 80 percent of the states have a smaller percent of residents than Rhode Island um, um, of I should have put here of um, residents age 65 and older that's an awkward sentence but you get it now now let's look at this next question which of these two states is more unusual well this is the thing when we're talking about unusual we're talking about how far how far away from the mean how far away from I'm doing my air quotes right now guys how far away from it is average well 8% is over here somewhere 80% is here 80% is closer to 50% so the one that's more unusual is the one that's the farthest away from the middle 50% which is Colorado now let's go ahead and read this problem and as we read this problem um, we're going to recognize being in a, a percentile, higher percentile, is not always a good thing. So, take a moment. Okay, so as I highlight the key information here, Larry's almost fell, guys, almost fell. Larry's in the 90th percentile for his blood pressure. That's no bueno. That means he has high blood pressure. That means that 90, he's higher than 90% of the men that are, as I use their language, similar to him. And, but then there's at least 10% that aren't as good as his, but that means they're probably going to have a heart attack. But anyway, okay, so here, how should the wife, who is a statistician, respond to Larry's statement? Well, here, about 90% of them are similar, similar to you, Larry, have lower blood pressure, meaning they're better, okay, and 10% are similar here, which means they have the higher blood pressure, which takes me to my point that I said at the very beginning, a higher percentile is not always good. Um, for those of you who have little brothers and sisters, um, really young ones, and you are old enough to recognize percentiles of weight, your parents will tell you that, or young parents, well, my child is in the 75th percentile for height, which that means that they're pretty tall. You know, oh, my child is in the 90th percentile of weight. Well, that means they're a little chubby. Okay, but that's um, what it is. But with all percentiles, we are comparing it to the mean or the mean, the mean or the median average. And I want to say both because when it comes to the idea of bell curves, when the median and the mean are approximately the same. Remember, what's the S word? Yep, they're symmetric. Now, I'm going to wait for problem number six, and I want to jump down to this right here and talk about another topic when it comes to the idea of percentiles. Relative um, frequency um, um, polygons, that's what they're referred to, or the term that they see all the majority of the time is OGI. Now, the reality is I kind of snuck an ogive in on you um, when we were doing the review. And the reason I seen, and I know that I did, but I wanted to show you the overall idea behind the concept of how things are found. So, right now, let's talk about what the terminology, first of all, with the, um, when it comes to the ogive. So, ogive is just as a frequency table, but what is a relative frequency table? Well, first of all, a regular frequency table is nothing but a bunch of data. And then we have just hash marks, meaning if I have between the ages of 40 and 49, oh, I've got one person, there's a second person, there's a third person, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That's a frequency um, table. And then, of course, you come up with the total number. But when they say relative frequency table, they're talking about the relationship to the whole. So, in other words, it is percentages yes yes okay next cumulative frequency polygons 
or tables, I'm sorry. That means we have to add up the frequencies. So here, if I have a frequency that's a 1, and then in, in, in one category, let's say from 40 to 49, I'm just giving these ages from 50 to 59. Um, if I've got 1, then I've got 3 people in that age group, and then I'm going to go from 60 to 69. I've got 5. Here, the idea of a cumulative um, frequency is, here is 1, and then when I'm adding, then I'm going to add the 1 and the 3. And as I add the 1 and the 3, that's going to give me a 4. What does that represent? Well, that represents, um, if these are ages, people between the ages of 40 and 59. And then here, I'm going to add the 1 and the 3 and the 5, and that's going to give me a total of 9. What does that represent? That represents people between the ages of 40 and 69. Now, if you're wondering what this has have to do with um, percentiles, you'll see in a few minutes when we look at the ogives. So right now, last thing I want to talk about before we actually get into it is um, relative frequency, relative cumulative frequency tables. What that's saying is that we get the percentages and then we add them up. Now, I'm just going to jump into an example for this and not even go back to the, what I did. Because, see, the thing about having a cumulative relative frequency table, and I know I said it um, backwards, was just to remind you of this, to remind you that I've got to have a cumulative. Well, all I did was add up a short list. Then I've got to find a percentage of the whole when I've accumulated things. So... Let's just jump down to the next problem and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. This list right here is the list of when presidents were inaugurated. Please change that um, right there from 45 to 49 because when this was done, Obama was not president. So, and he was inaugurated somewhere in his later, late 40s, even though he's old looking right now. Okay, so. Here, please notice, what did I do? I found the total, and these are the frequencies. There was two presidents that were born between 40 and 44. Um, Seven presidents were born between, I'm sorry, not born, that were inaugurated, inaugurated between 45 and 49. Thirteen presidents that were inaugurated between the ages of 50 and 54, and so on. So, here, relative frequency. Well, that's going to be two out of 44. That's going to be... 7 out of 44. That's going to be 13 out of 44, 12 out of 44, so forth and so on. And you can figure out the percentages. But I chose not to put the percentage down here because of this particular portion right here. I need cumulative frequency. So as I do the cumulative frequency, I don't want, I just want to be able to look at these numbers right here. Add the 2, and that's going to be the 2 right here. Okay, now all of a sudden, I want to add the 2 and the 7, and that's going to give me the um, give me the 9. Because remember, the whole thing is frequency is nothing but a number or a tally. Cumulative means you add them up. Notice here what's happening. You've got your 7, you've got your 2, and now all of a sudden you've got your 13 to get the grand total of 22. And then you just keep doing that to get the values of 34, 41, um, and 44. Please notice that as you added things cumulatively, that value is going to be the exact value of what the total number of presidents were. Now let's look at this portion right here. It's saying that now since I have these values, I'm literally going to take the cumulative frequency and divide it by the grand total. So you can see here 2 divided by 44, 9 divided by 44, 22 divided by 44, and so on and so forth. If your thoughts are, well, why are we doing this, Yarbro? It's because this is going to help us with percentiles. So go ahead and finish doing that chart, and let's get ready for the next page. Okay, now as I look at this next page, I already got us started. So they're saying, how does Obama compare? Um, compare? Because so he was inaugurated at age 47. So I am guesstimating that 47 is here. 
notice I go up to where the ogive, um, where the that age hits the actual ogive, and then I slide over. It looks like to me that he is in the 10th percentile. And then I'm just going to represent it as P10. Remember what that means. That means that there were, um, this represents the number that did not, that were inaugurated younger than, um, younger than him, and then the other 90% represents the people that were inaugurated, or presidents that were inaugurated, that were older than him. Let's go on to part B. Here, how does President Lincoln compare? Well, I looked it up. Um, I googled it. He was 52 when he was inaugurated. So you can see I have the area right here that's 52. I'm too lazy to get a straight edge now. Oh, I'm paying for it. That was crooked. And then I'm just going to slide over. You can see how this would be much better with the straight edge. Oh, that's pretty straight there. you got to give me credit for that one. Okay, so here as we're looking at that, that's about 52. Some of you might say, well, it's a little, little taller than that. Okay, I'll give you that one. So it looks like Lincoln is in about the 21st percentile. 21st. I'm going to save in the 22nd because you see how off I am. It would have been a little higher. Okay. Here, the center of the distribution. The center of the distribution would be this. Let's look at the, what's the center of any distribution? The 50th percentile here. And then, yes, I'm going to use a straight edge. Fine, people, fine. Whatever was handy. So it looks like the 50th percentile was age 55. Next, here, 25% of the presidents were younger than. So now, let's look at the 25th percentile. I'm trying to find another color here, that red going on. So here's the 25th percentile. Now you go ahead and answer that question and answer the 75th percentile, then come, and then come back. Okay, so, so far I have got the 25th percentile, and I want to say it was about age, what? 52-ish, and am I off a little? Notice I straighten that up a little. Um, but let's see what this is saying. 25% of the presidents were younger than, yeah, I'm going to go with 52 at inauguration. And now as I find the 75th percentile, remember straight edges are my friend. They are now, considering I screwed it up. So you go ahead, draw a line, then draw it down, see what age you get. Okay, and now here, okay, are you guys, for those of you guys who are OCD type A, yes, actually a straight line. I did my corners to make sure it was straight. I know you're proud of me. Okay, see, I had my corners. But here, the 75% 70, um, of presidents were younger than 60 at inauguration. So there we have it. We've got the idea of ogives and then looking at ogives and then... Um, the um, um, percentiles. Okay, so have a good one. Bring your books tomorrow. I will see you. Bye-bye.